All right. I like showcasing stuff on my YouTube channel that hasn't been shown already a thousand times, or maybe not at all. I'm an engineer, and I think like an engineer, not like a gunsmith. So what I'm going to show you is how to measure the clearance between the buffer and the buffer retaining pin when the gun is fully assembled using a series of feeder gauges. All right, for this demonstration, we have a 2018 Colt SOCOM. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna push out the takedown pin, and we're gonna push out the pivot pin. And we're gonna hold the rifle together like this. When we do this, what's happening is this spring-loaded buffer is pushing up on this upper receiver until the buffer strikes the pin. You can see the gap here, watch this. That's how much clearance you have between the buffer and the buffer retaining pin. And you can use a series of different feeler gauges until you find the exact clearance. This is a little over 30 thousandths. Now I know people say, oh, all you have to do is just swing it up, swing it down. You can look and see and you can feel it. And you can do that. But doing it this way, you can use a series of different gauges to tell exactly how much clearance you really have. And I find Colts have at least 30 thousandths or more. You know you have this much clearance because when you push down hard and that upper pivot pin goes in, that bolt carrier group just pushed that buffer off that retaining pin by at least 30 thousandths. All right? Let's look up at a different rifle. This is a Colt M16A1 built by U.S. Ordnance. Oh man, this is a beautiful rifle. So we're going to do the same test. We're going to push out the two pins, hold the rifle together like this, and when we do, you can feel it jump up, you can see the gap, and you can see how much gap you have there. Well in excess of 30 thousandths, that's probably close to 40 when I measured it earlier. That's a lot of gap. All right, you know you have that much gap because when you push down tight and hold it tight and that pivot pin goes in, you know you have that much clearance. All right, let's take a look at something a little different. This is a home-built Franken gun. I built this gun. It's built perfectly. It's flawless in every way. It's just a, an amazing home-built rifle. It's got a Centurion Arms lower. It's got a BCM Thermal Fit Upper, Colt Receiver Extension, and Colt Bolt Carrier Group. All right, let's see how much clearance we have on the home-built freaking gun. This is where a lot of people run into problems. These are all quality parts. Now the 30 thousandths go in a little tight, but it does go in, so we have at least 30 thousandths clearance here. Okay? Now, a lot of people are having problems with the face of the buffer getting tore up, and that's caused by one of two things. Either the buffer is impacting the retaining pin when the gun is cycling, or there's a burr on the back of the boat carrier group. I don't know what the percentages are, but I'd be willing to guess about 60 to 70% of the time it's a burr. This is though the way you can tell and eliminate the buffer striking the retaining pin. All right, let's take a look. Let's disassemble this. This gun has about 2,000 rounds to it. And it's 2,000 for 2,000. It has never failed to cycle flawlessly. Take a look at that buffer. There's not a nick, scratch, or mark on it. It's beautiful. And that, folks, is how they should run. Just like this. If your buffer face is all tore up, you need to figure out if it's the retaining pin being struck or if it's a burr. If the retaining pin is being struck, then you either got an out-of-spec lower, a short bolt carrier group, or some other issue you need to resolve. That's how they should look after 2,000 rounds. They should look brand new.